So in this video, I'm going to be giving my thoughts on Ghostbusters Afterlife. Spoiler free. I was curious, but never that overly excited about a new Ghostbusters film. To me, it was just one of those franchises that it felt like Sony was hanging on for, for dear life. Mainly out of desperation and the need to have more franchises besides just Spider-Man. This all coming from the perspective of someone that didn't think the 2016 female Ghostbusters was the worst film in the world. It's just obviously not the kind of film or the film in the franchises that fans wanted to see. This film, Ghostbusters Afterlife, is very much a legacy film in the same vein as The Force Awakens. You know, one of those films in a series that takes place decades after the original film or the original series and references the events of that film in sort of a reverential, almost fanboyish kind of way. In this film, the family of one of the OG Ghostbusters moves to a small town in Oklahoma where another otherworldly paranormal event starts to happen. And this time it's up to the kids to get to the bottom of what's going on and sort of take care of this whole paranormal activity that's going on. The film ends up being pretty much a hybrid of Stranger Things combined with nostalgia for the original Ghostbusters. The Stranger Things influence is pretty obvious here. The whole thing about being a kid's story, we're seeing the whole thing play out from a kid's perspective, the whole paranormal kind of otherworldly events start to happen. It takes place in a small town, just like how Stranger Things does. It's obvious why they went this route, just because Stranger Things is obviously super popular. So it makes sense why they're trying to sort of ride off that whole sort of Stranger Things momentum and people's love for that series. It also ends up having sort of the feel of sort of Spielberg films. Those sort of classic sort of kid stories like E.T. where we sort of these things or things are worked out from a kid's perspective and we're following the kids on the adventure. This actually didn't end up being such a bad thing for the movie, just because the kids that we follow were actually pretty interesting. Led by the main kid that is actually the main character through the film, Phoebe, who ends up being the granddaughter of one of the OG Ghostbusters. And the girl that played her was really good. She has kind of a nerdy, kind of awkward vibe going on, but she's still like super confident. She ended up being really a nice character, a nice centerpiece character for the film. And the other kids are good too. Her best friend in the film, her name's Podcast, he was cool. There's that one kid that's actually from Stranger Things. He was fine in the movie. And there's also some other supporting role from Paul Rudd, who added sort of some, some nice humor in the typical stuff that Paul Rudd does. So the cast was definitely a strong point for the movie. The film's heavy nostalgia factor for the first film is where it might start to lose people and where it might be kind of hit or miss in that kind of way. Just because this film plays on heavy nostalgia for that original 1984 Ghostbusters and all the iconic elements in that film. You know, when it comes to like Slimer, the Gozer Dogs, Zool, Marshmallow Man, uh, all that kind of stuff. This film makes use of sort of all of those kind of elements and puts them in there. And admittedly, I kind of understand it just because this film being sort of a legacy film, it makes sense why they would want to reference that kind of stuff or have as much of it in this film as possible. Personally, I didn't mind it so much just because I felt like for the most part, the scenes that they did the nostalgia stuff, I thought they did some okay or kind of fun stuff with those scenes. You know, the whole sort of marshmallow man thing. Now, instead of one big marshmallow man, it's sort of a whole bunch of tiny marshmallow men that are kind of cute, but kind of mischievous like gremlins. That scene was kind of fun. The new kind of slimer kind of ghosts that whole kind of chase sequence that was a fun sequence most of the stuff they did in that way was kind of cool there was sort of a natural momentum it's so fun to follow and i didn't mind it so much the nostalgia factor scene that sort of kind of bothered me the most was the whole sort of callback or throwback to the whole possession thing in the first film. You know, in the first film, it kind of worked. It was sort of like a, whoa, kind of like a fun sort of story element that happened. What happens in this film, it feels kind of forced. And it was one moment where I'm all like, all right, y'all got to stop trying to copy that original 1984 Ghostbusters. It gave me that star killer base moment I had when I saw The Force Awakens for the first time. When I saw like, all right enough kind of refer referencing that first film try to do your own shit this is the point in the movie where it started to go downhill a little bit just because then the nostalgia just started to come in all over the place to where the movie was sort of losing sort of the original feel and a lot of the good stuff it was doing earlier when it came to sort of following the kids when it came to sort of its humor when it came to sort of the story the sort of the mystery element of the film that stuff sort of got thrown out the window and it just became nostalgia 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 and so like, oh man, I was really sort of enjoying this. But now when you're just using too much nostalgia and you're not sort of putting in your whole original effort, it makes the movie start to feel kind of like superficial in that way. Regardless of what issues started to happen with the movie towards the ending section, 
It's hard not to get a kick out of the sort of the real crowd pleasing moments the movie puts at you towards the ending. You know, the movie really sort of brings out all the kicks at the end and gives a lot of the sort of real Ghostbusters fans, fans, real fans of that original 1984 film, the stuff they really wanted to see. Personally, I don't consider myself the hugest, biggest fanboy of that original 1984 Ghostbusters. But still, when it comes to this movie's ending, it did kind of put like a smile on my face towards how like, okay, that's pretty dope the way they did things here. And it really sort of like touching moments and sort of what they do with sort of the stuff towards the end of the movie. So it really started to bring the movie up a level after it was starting to go downhill with the heavy nostalgia that was going on towards the end, towards the ending part of the movie and as the climax was building up. In the end, I ended up thinking it was a solid good movie. You know, the nostalgia factors where the movie might start to lose people, but the movie still had plenty of sort of a decent amount of other good stuff when it came to sort of following the kids, the sort of humor, I liked the effects, some of the ghost sequences and chase sequences and that kind of stuff was fun. And it's like I said, the whole element of it being a legacy film, you did feel like they were sort of paying homage or sort of paying the, the due respect to the original Ghostbusters film. At times it was doing it a little too much, but for the most part, I think it worked out what they were trying to do. The whole Ghostbusters, nostalgia, plus Stranger Things, plus the whole Spielberg element ended up being sort of a solid movie experience, at least in my opinion. So it, it would end up being a 7 out of 10 for me. I actually wouldn't mind seeing a sequel. I think they do have plans for a sequel. We'll see how this movie does in the long one. But as it stands with this movie right here, I enjoyed it for the most part. So that'll do it for this movie review. If you made it to the end, thank you for watching.